on this episode of Arts and Crafts for the Apocalypse. We're going to make a sling. So you're going to need 550 paracord here and you're going to need in the A color we're going to go with two, two 16 foot and three 2 foot strands and then in color B you were to make a two color one you're going to have a 16 foot an 8 foot and four two foot sections you're going to need a tape measure and you're going to need some scissors or a knife so let's go okay so now to get started we're going to take the three 16 foot sections of paracord here and i have two different colors here you could have three different colors or they could all be the same color it doesn't really matter so we have them folded in half so it's eight feet eight feet on all sides here with all of them and then we're going to want to go back about four inches here to start because we're going to make a finger loop right in the center here so cut her back about four inches if you have some type of clamps or something this makes it a lot easier otherwise you could tie a knot but yeah so come back about four inches and then we'll just so we just clamp them together like that so now i got the one ends a uh, four inches longer so we're going to start with that we're going to tie we're going to do a three cord braid here until we get the finger loop made so let's start so you just take the outside you bring it in and then you bring the outside back in over here and then keep pulling these out otherwise it's gonna start all tangling up on the far side here so pretty simple outside to the center pull outside to the center and we just keep going like that two colors so you got the different little specks keeps it looking a little more interesting in my opinion use any color you want i was thinking black and red would have been kind of nice make it like a black widow but i like my camouflage too because i just like the stealthy camouflage as a hunter and stealth camper and everything but for my uh throwing ones i really got to start making them in brighter colors because you can get hard to find them but so we're gonna tie this out about four inches here we'll see if it makes a good loop for our finger whatever makes the right loop for your finger is what you're gonna want maybe make it a little bit big just so if you have to wear gloves if you're using this thing in the winter if you're making this for survival you don't just get to do survival on beautiful sunny days so you may want to be wearing a thin pair of gloves it's nice and cold out and then you want to keep pulling it pull it give it a nice little tight so it doesn't get too loose maybe give it a little stretch there and this has got to be probably long enough here now so we'll put that together uh, we'll go a little bit farther here i don't know that that's a pretty good loop there i got a bit of a thin glove in there anyways i wouldn't be able to get a thick one but that doesn't really matter okay so now now we have enough for our finger loop and we're going to braid this back together but first we are going to take that eight foot section of color b and we're going to put a little tiny knot in the end we'll burn this off later i don't have a lighter on me right now but that's okay we're going to have lots to burn off so this is now going to get added in the center of the braid here and we're going to pop this out of the clamp so now we have seven strands here now and we got the two greens on the outside and we got the three beige to the inside the way we had this anyways and then we're going to straighten them out because they'll get tangled up here for us but let's get them straightened out so we got a nice plant to work with here and we're going to take it make sure we get them all organized properly so they're going the right way in our braid here okay so now we're going to take this outside green one that moves to the center here so now you got three lines here which i'll be bringing four lines over to this side <coughs> and now we're going to take <coughs> this one here 
over into the center here and now uh, we got four on this side and you bring the outside one from there over to here and you keep going we will get a couple in here so it's somewhat tight but we got to get them all going so we don't mess this up And now we're gonna have our seven braid here, which will give you more control when you're trying to sling stones because it won't want to tangle up on you and all that jazz. But now that we're in here, okay, that knot has pulled in already. So that's good, it'll be nice and tight in there. Be able to pull on all those. And then now we're starting to get stiffer here so we can start getting like a nice Start tightening it there, get the four lines back to the center, to the bottom of the three lines there, and over. And now I'll keep this braid going. And yeah, now you're getting a nice thick rope here. I wanted about 21 inches because I find that that is a pretty good amount of power versus your control and accuracy. But because this is paracord and it's going to stretch, we're gonna take this to about 20 inches and it'll end up being 20, 21 inches after you throw a few rocks there and she starts stretching out. So that's why you will need to keep a tape measure on hand. And we're gonna add, once we get down to 17 inches, or well, we're gonna add a six inch pocket. So we'll have to add three inches uh, that will be on to the length of, to make the 20 inches and then there's going to be another three inches where we braid the two foot sections in before the pocket to keep it sturdy making it a 14 braid so we're going to want to go six inches up from the 20 so once we go from the handle down 16 inches we're going to start tying in our uh start tying in the other line so that's why you'll need a tape measure so you can measure down and once you hit 16 inches, you start braiding in your two foot sections. But we'll get to that when we get to it. I find this to be an excellent survival tool because it's been used all throughout history. Uh, your shepherds would use it to protect the sheep against the wolves. You'd use that. Uh, it's been used for hunting. It's been used for a range weapon in war. Apparently you get about 400 meters with it. And uh, you'd probably use a longer sling for that, but we're only hunting in small areas so we want more control and we don't need as much distance but these used to smash up the armor dent the armor in and the metal helmets there were stones coming from these they were vicious and king david took down goliath with one so these are just going to destroy a small game and even some of your like way more than a slingshot will or even like your mini crossbow or something like that. Like it's gonna, you'd probably take out a decent sized animal if you were in an emergency. I don't think it'd be very humane though to be going after like a wolf or a coyote, but you could definitely kill them. You could kill zombies with it if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a formidable weapon because you're gonna get, you can get a good size stone going at I believe it's about 150 160 or so miles an hour so that's that's gonna at least stun you and knock you out it's uh but let's see and the other good part is you just tie these things around your arm or you throw them in a pocket or in a backpack they don't take up any weight and it's going to be reliable this thing isn't going to like it's gonna last you years and years and years with no issues, possibly an entire lifetime, depending on the materials you make and how you treat it. But this thing's gonna outlast your ammo. It's gonna outlast your bow strings and outlast your limbs. So it is an excellent choice for a long-term situation in my books but and they're fun to use they look good I think they're starting to be a pretty nice pattern here and like I said you choose any color you want and you can 
make it more colors. But so you can kind of personalize it to your own likings. How far are we here now? So let's get a thing out here so I know where 16 inches is. We got quite a ways to go yet. And so it's just outside to the inside. It doesn't matter if you're doing a three braid, four braid, or a three braid, a five braid, a seven braid. It's always the outside string into the center. Then you end up with more strings on this side. So now you take the outside string to the center. It's kind of the same concept. It does get more confusing. And just wait till we get to the two foot sections being added in. And we got 14 strands to deal with. That's when she gets really fun. But very worth it i like the way that these slings work i think they're way better than just tying the paracord with a pouch i think it is kind of a useless ugly looking sling that you don't have nearly as much control this is like a balliolic style or whatever the hell you call it style of a sling that would be made with natural materials though not this uh not paracord but i'm not in a total survival situation yet where I don't have access to this so I'm gonna make it out of the cordage because I think it's gonna be stronger and it's just a lot easier and if I'm if this ever breaked on me in a survival situation then I would look into then I would actually twist it with the natural materials but why do that now and keep stretching these strings out because they'll get all tangled up on you gets easier that gets easier as you get farther into it because you end up with less cordage to pull off the start you got so much of it but yeah, i'm really liking the way this one's looking so far but yeah you can see that's like a nice thick string here so it's going to have some control when you go to throw and I mean, this thing will be heavy enough here, strong enough to lift up my truck. You got like seven strands at 550 pounds each. She's more than enough strength to throw a rock, that's for sure. <sighs> yeah, the other style I make is a five braid, and I go screw the five braids all the way through, and I end it in the handle here, and then I add five strands to it. But I just find with the seven strands, you do get more control, and just makes it a little better I think and then at the end after we get the pocket done we will be tapering it off so the back end of the sling goes into more of a whip and it's lighter so it gets out of the way faster giving you a better shot and then we will work on trying to make a nice easy release at the end of it as well and then it can be good to give her a little stretch here Every now and again, try to keep her all nice and straight there. So when I made my five strand one, I made it about 24 inches and it stretched out to like almost 26 inches now or 26 and a half inches I think it might be. And it has a ton of power when you throw the rocks, it just smokes things. But it does get harder to control it because the shorter you make them, the more control you're going to have over your throw but the longer they are the more power they're going to have so you want to try to find a good balance here because if you make them too short you might as well just be throwing the stone but you're going to be super accurate and if you make them too long you will put them through almost anything but you're probably not going to hit what you want so without the accuracy the power doesn't really matter but if you don't have enough power then the accuracy doesn't overly matter either because you ain't gonna do nothing. Sling it at an animal. You definitely want to try to make the most humane kill. I think you owe that to the animal to be as humane as possible when killing them. But I mean, you get a rock, a big ass rock flying. It's uh, with your squirrels and your rabbits even your raccoons and that you're gonna take them out pretty quickly they're not going anywhere and you'll be able to make sure they're dispatched properly in a timely manner which is very important now i actually have a nail on the wall that i usually i'll put the loop in here 
and then I'll pull down on it. I might do that off camera. I'm not going to bother moving you over there, but you do that on a limb branch in a tree too or something just to make sure you get it all stretched out nice. And let's check our job from the loop. Okay, so now for three inches, we are going to add our two foot sections in and make it, it'll end up being like a seven times two braid or whatever, 14 strands all together. Cause we're gonna make it, there's a split pocket here and I don't wanna make it less braids here. You could try to do it. So it's like a three braid, three braid pocket, but I don't like that. So we're gonna turn this into like a seven times two braid, I guess it'd be kind of like 14 strands through here. So we're gonna, we got our four, of the color B and we got three two foot sections of the A color. So now we're going to line these up. So I'm going to want the green with the beige and the beige with the green. So it keeps a decent pattern going here and we're going to have to clamp this. This is not a fun part of doing this, but So we put these going like that. Leave a little extra there because you end up pulling them out and it's annoying. But then we're gonna want these ones coming across this way. Put the beige with the green. And then once we get this going, it won't be too bad once it gets going. You just gotta try to keep the cords straight though so you're not using the wrong ones. But then we got to get into splitting them into the pockets, which will be another fun part. So let's try clamping these now. So then we're going to clamp this all. You can just tie these together. You can tie them around so they don't pull through. But if you got the clamps, it's better to use the clamps. Now this clamp's kind of too small for this. I should have a bigger one. So it's going to be, want to come loose here. So I'm going to have to be very careful off the start to not cross everything here. So I'll do it over here so you can see. So we got the two green with the two beige. We got the two beige with the two green. So now this is the side that had the four cords. So now you take the one green long one with the, and you take the short one and you move that over to here. This is where it gets tricky so you don't lose track of which one's actually which and then the ends here we're not too worried about because we're just going to cut those off and we'll burn them once we get this going here but so get this one coming over and it's back to the center again but now we're doing always back to the center so that's why i like to keep them split apart here it makes it easier so now we got a, a green and a beige coming in get that coming over give that a bit of a pull there we want to keep that tight and then we got to make sure because you'll end up accidentally grabbing two short ones or two long ones. You don't want to do that. So you got to make sure you got the short and the long. This is where it'd be a lot easier too if you weren't, well, using different colors. It'd be kind of easier if I went with a solid color coming through here and then switch the colors for the shorts so you always know. But which one's the long and which one's the short, but so you can see now we're getting like a nice fat braid here that's gonna hold everything together. Try to be careful here so you get it as right as possible. Okay, so, oh, see we're getting all, where's the long outside one here? There's the long outside one with the short outside one. Bring it over. Now we're only gonna go for about three inches with this. And then we are going to make a split. Let me pull that in. These should be the two outsides, which they are. Pull those onto the inside. Around. Check our measurement here. About two and a half inches. There we go, that's our three inches there. Now, we gotta make <coughs> a split in this. 
So what I usually do here is I'll take the GAN with the short one and a long one from the outside and I'll put that over in between and then into the middle here. I gotta try to pull all that nice and tight. So, from the outside, over, under, through here, and then now we end up with a nice little, almost like a knot there. And now we will, now we gotta try to get seven strands on each side here. So one of these strands here will have to come over to here. So now I'm just gonna take one of these strands from underneath here and I'm gonna switch it over to this side here. So now we got seven strands over here. We got seven strands over here. So now we can take this clamp off here because that's knotted. These we will now cut and burn off. So we can just clamp these seven over here and not worry about them for the next little bit. And we will just start with these ones. So now we're gonna to wanna to get these in an order here. So that's the way they seem to wanna to lie here. Not too worried about the pattern for now. I want them all going the right way. And now we will take one from here over three strands. And then now we just go into the seven braid paracord here. We got four over here, so we move that one into the center. And we go back to this again here. We're gonna do this for six inches. And then we're gonna braid them back in and make another one of these. And then we're gonna start tapering it down so the other side is shorter. So back over. So I wonder if that's even gonna be long enough. <laughs> but should be. It was the other times I made it. I always question that. So yeah, just keep on with the seven braid here. So we go this six inches, we'll clamp the end, and then we'll do the other one, and then we'll join them back together. Okay, so now we're at about six inches. So I'm gonna put a clamp on over here. And now we tie the other side. But this way you end up with two nice fat straps here to hold the rock. Because I've seen other people where they'll do like a 2x6 braid or a 2x3 braid. And then they make it a 3 or a three braid here and a 3 braid here. But then you have to tie ropes and stuff in between and it's kind of narrow. I don't overly like that. I like having the thicker coming through here. But it is more work doing it that way. But whatever. It's, uh, it's gonna last you forever, so I'd say put the little extra effort in and you'll end up with a better product in the end. So now, we will figure out how we wanna get this one going here, how to use lay here. And we'll do the same thing again. So we want the one from the outside, this one's from the outside here too. So we'll move this one, there we go. That looks pretty darn close. Might not be perfect, but I'm not overly concerned about that, to be honest. And then we just seven braid again. Outside into the center. Give her a pull. Outside into the center. That you want to make sure you keep doing is the outside to the center. Which can be hard to tell sometimes when you're first getting started on a new on here yeah that should be it and then through the pocket both of them are going to be slightly different looking because the one has four greens one has four beige now so that'll be a slightly different pattern until you come back to the that will be the same and then you'll end up with the same pattern on the other side but it'll look fairly uniformed 
this is where you could even just add a second color here so it'd be the strap would be all one color and then you'd have like a multicolored pouch but i don't know i like the multicolor all the way through i think it looks good and yeah, so you can see that the you got the two different patterns because you got the different string counts now but that is perfectly fine now we get this one out to six inches match it up with the other one and we braid them back in and And then as we work our way up the other side, every three inches or so, we're gonna taper out. We'll taper out down from a, we'll go from the 14 braid, go up. So the 14 braid like this, back into a seven braid. Then we'll go up three inches. We'll take two lines out. We'll have to decide which color we wanna do that with. And then that'll be into a five braid. We'll run it up another three inches and then we'll drop it down to three braids. So that gives us the tail whip will be lighter than the handle side so it will get out of the way of the rock faster and it will make her more effective at doing what it's supposed to do and then we'll try to make a nice smooth release so it doesn't hold up in your hand at all and that way you can be very quick, precise. And then we'll have to decide, I don't know if I want to leave a whip on this. I took the whip off my last one. I don't know if it performs the same. I really got to find out what the little tassels at the end actually do. I know they make a kind of a crack, so I kind of wouldn't mind not having them because then it would be more silent. But I think the tassels do help get the whip to the whip end out of the way more. So. I'm gonna leave them on for now. I might cut them off later, but it's a good thing. When you make your own, you can tamper with it however you want. So, and this, this is just a awesome, awesome SHTF weapon to have, or Apocalypse. This will get you through a long, long duration of a problem. And you, some people get very, very accurate with it. I got to spend a lot more time with them because I'm kind of newer to this. I'm more into the archery and stuff like that, but <coughs> I am very much enjoying this. And I mean, with one of these, you don't have, you don't have to like work with your, you just pick up a rock and you sling it. So you don't have to make new arrows. You don't have to like, uh, I love the uh, ad ladle, but to just make the darts for that is a lot of work. And to, you have to be very precise to get them just right and trying to get an eight foot branch that's straight enough. And then you gotta bend it to keep it straight. And it's just, it gets to be a lot of work. And then uh, if it's not right, it's not gonna fly right. And then that's gonna be a major problem. Where this, you grab a stone and you sling it. You wanna try to get the same size stones, same shape stones if you can, but I mean, this is just going to be much easier, quicker tool to use. And you can get a lot of range with this. But, okay, now let's take this clamp off because we got them about the same length here. And now we're going to want to join these suckers back together, which is going to be fun again. These two around here, tighten that up, and I'll put those through the center here. And they're going to come up this side. Now let's see what else we can get going here. And one of these. So there we go. Now I got three short and three long on this side, and I got the color patterns I want. And I will now do the same on this side. So then make sure we line these patterns up so it looks nice and pretty. Because I want these two to come through here and through the center so they don't slip out there. And then that is going to make a nice loop here 
hold that together and they won't come loose on me here and then and then the long out here so it's all long green outside and then short beige long beige in the center and short green the way we started it up at the other end there over. So it takes a little bit of time to organize all this to get it the way I'm going to want it here. But now we got those. We got everything organized here now. So now we're going to be able to start braiding again here. Okay, so I got that nice and tight there now. I got this pouch the way I want it. So now we go into like a 7x2 braid here. I take that and I put it to the center, the long green with the short beige. And then we go from the outside here, the most outer green cord, the most outer short beige cord, and pull that back to the center. Give it a little snug there. It's gonna take a second here. Then we got short beige long green back into the center Ooh. it's always fun when you do these transitions here okay I need this one here mixed with this and I'll start pulling this tighter and tighter as I actually start getting some braids in here I'll have to start that's pretty hard to do because it just wants to unravel, but there we go. Now we can start getting some tight braids in here. The outside to the inside. Give her a good pull there. So I'm just gonna braid this out for three inches, and then we'll start cutting. The, we'll start leaving these some of the short ropes behind. Make sure it's the short ones. Or you're gonna run out. They may just braid out. There's one that's really short in here and it may just find its way out of the braid, but that doesn't really matter. And then you don't need to tie any knots this way because it's all just gonna be self-knotted there. They, 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 you burn it off, you push it in and it will never pull through your braid there so just like that these will all get cut off burnt pushed down and they're self-knotted then but you see this one here is really short it might not even make three inches but mind you we're probably getting close to it now we're at uh, what just over two so it's just gonna make it so if you're gonna tie knots here instead of using a clamp you're definitely gonna want to go longer than the two feet because otherwise you may end up being short which you're not going to be happy if you get this far in and all of a sudden you have to start over again because you had some short cords that were too short so you're going to want to be careful in that way but so I'd rather waste the I don't like wasting paracord but I'd rather waste the paracord than waste all the time and effort and then you wasted all the paracord anyways because it's all got to be redone then. And you see that one's probably I braided out already. I don't think I'm going to put it through again here. Let's see. Yeah, no, it's too short. It's too short, so we'll just come. It's braided out now. So. Now we're... But I think we're at our three inches here now anyways. Yeah, just about so it really doesn't matter that that one ran out because they're all about to be out do one more cord here I might just actually leave all those out leave that one out right there bring this one over Now we're just gonna do our long cords here. And we'll leave the shorties and all come out. 
I'll just braid them out of it. So that one's going to be out of the picture. And you can cut them off so they're not as not getting in your way here. Would be not a horrible idea either. But before I do that, let's make sure I got a good pattern going here. Okay, so I wanted to go back and change things. Once I cut them, it's going to be very hard to change anything. That's the problem with the split pocket is it makes it a lot more complicated. But I and like doing it with the extra putting all the extra cords and stuff in. But I really like the pocket that way. And then she doesn't open up too much to let her rock through. So you can don't have to put the cordage in between. I like it. But let's keep going here. Well, actually, just a second here. So we got about three inches to here. We got two and a half. So go about another three. And here we'll go to about three here. So it'll be three here, then three here, which I think we just might be at. Oh, I'll do one more braid here. And maybe, hmm, what color do we want out of here? So we'll do, hmm, okay. So now we have to make a decision here is which two strands do we want to cut off because we're tapering now. So do we want to cut, hmm, I think we'll get rid of this strand here, put that in there. And we'll get rid of this strand here. Put that over there. So now we'll do it like this. Let's get rid of one of each color to try to keep it somewhat uniform looking in here. And now we'll continue on. Now we're doing a five brand braid. So it's three strands on this side, two strands on this side. And then we're gonna go up about another three inches. And then, see now we got lots of cordage here. I could have cut them shorter, but whatever. I don't like to cut too short and then not have enough. And we can always use that for making prostic knots on ridge lines and stuff like that later. Always use for paracord. But I could definitely cut some of that down in the future. I'll let you know how much I cut off there if you want to make some shorter ropes but then if it's not the ones you wanted then you're gonna have trouble there so I'd rather do it this way and you're good so keep going with the five and then we're gonna cut two more out and we're gonna drop it down to three might actually keep the five braid for a bit here but then we'll get down to where it's more like a rounded braid and you'll be able to a whip out of the way nice but you can do it however you want here it's not rocket science here you will act a little different depending on how you do it but so we got 14 braid 7 braid 5 braid and we'll go might go 5 inches at the 5 braid here we'll see how far am I here we're at three. So do I want to go nine inches with just a whip? I think we're going to go a couple more inches with five braid just to make it, I don't want it too loose here already. Some structure here, but it is going to have to thin out so it whips out nice. So I think we'll, let's see where this is here. This one here, let's see you could do the three. We're almost at five here. So maybe we'll do a couple more braids. We'll just make it five and we'll see how it goes. So we have about three inches at 14, 
we have about three inches at seven and we have four and a half inches see is so about five inches with the five braid and now we will get rid of some more cordage here which ones do we want to get rid of so i think we'll go two green and one beige this one so we'll do it just a little longer so we get these two cords on the inside here and then we'll put them oh wait no 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 so now we'll put that one through take that over that over just put that one right out of the picture there now and then we come back over this way and now we're into three braid but it's the same thing it's the outside to the inside except for now we're only dealing dealing with three lines instead of five which was seven before and, and we just braid out those other ends there and now it's going to be like a pretty much like a round braid instead of a flat braid so this will be more like a whip now so i kind of like the other the look of the other end better than this end but we just want it to whip out of the way we don't want it holding up in front of the rock so this is the nice thing with doing the seven braid it gives me lots of room to taper cordage out now it does seem a little too tapered maybe but it's the nice thing if you make it with the natural materials though because you can just thin your cords a little bit and continue with the seven braid all the way down just making your strands thinner and thinner but it's also if you think this one has work try that one but and then just keep going here for a little bit and i'll have to check it I'm not so worried about the measurement here now so much as i'm going to fold it in half and hold it in my hand and once it feels comfortable when I'm standing when I feel I got the right amount of my thumb here then I will uh, call it good tie a knot and leave a tie, little whip tassel there and then we will start cutting all these off and burning them but so let's see where we're at now so this would come in like that and right now I still need it if you put the pocket level like that I need it up somewhere around here so we got to keep going here and if you do too much braiding you can always unbraid some of it and it's getting pretty easy now that it's just a three braid it's really not a big deal anymore and then the fun thing is going to be throwing some rocks with it and seeing how she does because my last one i went five braid all the way to the end and this should work a lot better because they are supposed to be tapered this end should be lighter than the ring end or the whip end should be lighter than the finger end that you hold on to but you can make any changes you want along the ways but this will give you a pretty good idea on just how i go about doing it and then you can change your colors you can if you want to bring it seven braids halfway up and then five braids maybe you want to keep it five braids the whole way or you you can decide and then the best way to do that is going to be uh as you start slinging rocks and if you, if you like the way it's reacting or you don't like the way it's reacting then you make it different the next time and they do get easier the first time i made it it was a real pain it's gotten a fair bit easier so if you just do it it'll get easier and easier every time and then you're left with something that could provide food for decades and decades to come
So. Oh, yeah, let's double check this again. So you put this in your finger, you put the rock in there, and then want the pocket about there. So I am almost. So I got it just in there. So I think I'm gonna bring it up just about here, and then I'm gonna tie my knot with my whip. Yeah, just a couple more braids and we are done. But I think I'll leave the whip too long to start because then if I don't like, if I want it longer in the hand, I can untie and braid in some more where if I cut them too short, then I can't do that. And then if I want it shorter, I can still untie, unbraid some and then I just cut the whip off once I'm sure I like the way it is. But, so now that I got it where I think I want it, I'm just gonna give it a little snug here for now. I'll tie that in a minute. But now I can start cutting this stuff off and get a feel for it. So let's, let's get cutting here. These two, cut all these. Ooh, it's getting to be a lot of cordage. I have to, I think my scissors are too dull to do that many at once. That's pretty much good enough the way it is. Alrighty, so all the places we had this, got the two cords here. So I'll get that burning. I wish that in. That one burning. Try not to set the house on fire. Give that a mush, and then that's not going to push back into it, it won't pull through anymore. Then, any place we cut, gotta go and burn it. Burn mush, and then that can't pull through. And lots of strings at the pockets here. Burn and wash, burn and wash. So that's, that stuff ain't gonna pull through, so that is now knotted permanently. Nice puff ball here. And I will get hot. <laughs> Try 
not to burn the good strings here if I can. There we go. So that's all done and then we just got the one up at the handle here. Give that a little burn here. God, it's really hot now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna check it, stand up, make sure I'm comfortable with it, and then we're gonna cut the tassels off. All right, so now I got it the exact length I want it. So we're just gonna give her a little knot here. Pull that through, and we'll give it another one. Pull these ones through. And then we gotta decide on our whip length here. So I don't know, maybe we'll go for maybe about the hand width there. Maybe go about, yay, cut that. And there we go. We now have a Balliolix, whatever style. So we now have a nice seven brand braid paracord sling and this thing should throw rocks really hard but so let's get out and check it out